Hello and welcome to this John Morris Group Tubing Selection Guide webinar. Thanks for joining us. My name's Simon Kirkman. I'm the Product Manager at the John Morris Group, looking after the Cole Palmer product range. That includes our Master Flex range of fluid transfer and pump systems, and including a very wide range of tubing products. So the idea is that by the end of this short presentation, you'll have a better understanding of how to go about choosing the right tubing for your application and the questions you need to be asking or at least where to go for advice on that. So tubing comes in many different forms. You might have heard of Tigon or Norprene, Platinum Cured, Silicon, C-Flex tubing, PTFE and so on. And even within these, you've got variations like Norprene Food or Tigon Fuel and Lubricant. And then there's all the different sizes to consider, internal diameters, outer diameters, wall thicknesses. So there's lots to choose from and it can get confusing when you're trying to work out what tubing you need for your particular application but it's important to spend a bit of time in the beginning making sure you do choose the right tubing so that your system, your pumping system or your fluid transfer system, whatever it is, so that performs as planned because that's gonna be the most economical in the long term. It's gonna mean less problems and wasted time and you're not gonna to have to spend time and money changing things later on. But if you don't get it right and you do end up using the wrong tubing, not only do you end up wasting time and money and getting frustrated, but if tubing fails prematurely or unexpectedly, unexpectedly because it's not right for your application, then you can end up with possibly hazardous fluid escaping from your system and leaking onto benches and floors, etc., which then presents a safety hazard even if the fluid itself is not hazardous. So we can use the acronym STAMP, S-T-A-M-P, to remind us of some of the more critical factors to keep in mind when uh, working out what tubing to use or to choose. We'll look at various, fact, various aspects around size, temperature, application, media and pressure and how that can affect your selection. We'll cover each of these briefly. So size, probably the most critical factor around size is the internal diameter or ID of the tubing, so how big that hole is that the fluid can flow through, how fast it can move through or the flow rate. So knowing what flow rate you'll need for your application will obviously be a big factor in determining the ID, the ID of the tubing you select. But you may also need to consider the outer diameter or the OD of the tubing in terms of what parts or equipment you need to connect, connect your tubing to in other parts of the system. It may need to be of a certain size to connect to those pieces. The wall thickness may also be a factor. And, uh, factor. This can affect things like gas permeability, which is critical in some applications. And wall thickness also affects the robustness or longevity of the tubing. For example, the range of Masterflex high performance tubing has wall thicknesses that are nearly double that of standard Masterflex precision tubing. And the tolerances of all these dimensions are also important when considering connections with other parts of your system. You wanna make sure that the tubing's the same each time you have to use a new piece in terms of these dimensions. So you make sure uh, you have good leak free connections. So you want low tolerances as well. And the length of the tubing you require for your application is, might, uh, might be something you have to consider as well. How often you need to replace the tubing is important in terms of how much you need to order or budget for periodically. 25 foot tubing is the most common length you can get, but for some popular tubing uh, there's longer lengths, um, sometimes up to 100 or 300 foot, and these can be more economical. So looking at temperature, so temperature's got a wide variety of implications on, on the tubing selection. Obviously the temperature of the fluid being transferred, uh, that you're transferring is often what comes to mind first and, and is a very important factor. Your tubing definitely needs to, be needs to be rated to this temperature. But cleaning temperatures are also important and even the ambient temperature, maybe you've got a, a process application in an overly hot or cold area, you need to make sure your tubing performs in those conditions as well. And temperature fluctuations are things that also need to be considered. Sudden changes or extreme temperatures can adversely affect performance and cause premature failing of your tubing. So different tubing formulations will have different specifications regarding temperature, which will help you narrow down your choice. So the application, understanding the specifics of your application is probably the most complex part of tubing selection. It can often not be well considered or taken seriously enough uh, in the beginning. When we're trying to help people with applications, sometimes they can be a bit vague with a description, either because they honestly don't know or aren't sure of what tubing they're looking for, or sometimes there can be even um, intellectual property considerations or concerns about disclosing too much information about a product or a process. But it's just important to get answers or as much information as we can um, around, the, uh, around the application, um, and it's a critical part of the tubing selection process. So regulatory concerns, always at the top of the list here. 
understanding what documentation is needed and what special regu regulatory compliance is needed uh, is quite important. So FDA, USDA, 3A, ISO, EPA, USP and so on all have their different compliance concerns which will mean a different tubing selection. So you should make sure you review any required documentation and supporting certificates etc before acquiring tubing. Missing or incomplete documentation can just mean uh, delays or frustration, aggravation later on. So make sure you have this covered off in the beginning. Also knowing the dynamics of your application will help with tubing selection. If you need a hard or hydrometer tubing, soft flexible tubing, is your tubing being moved or flexed continuous, continually? Do you have a continuous high use application? And there are materials available to address all these sorts of factors. So the important thing is to understand the full scope of the application. So understanding the fluid or media being transported is necessary to ensure we avoid or eliminate issues with tubing associated with extractables, adsorption or absorption in the tubing, or particularly entrapment. Different chemicals attack various materials at different rates, so understanding the complete use of the product will help with proper selection. For example, cleaning chemicals can often be the most aggressive fluids and not actually the fluid of main application. For example, in a vitamin, vitamin dosing application in a food or beverage plant, the CIP chemicals and sanitizers probably need more consideration than the fluid being dosed. You may also need to consider any chemical reactions that, that may occur when changing fluids or when you mix two fluids together. Sometimes you may even need to consider the ambient chemicals present, so either in the air surrounding the tubing product, or sometimes there can even be drips from leaks or condensation which need to be considered. If the fluid is very aggressive, there are some multi-layered products like the Master Flex Gore Stay Pure Tubing. And while it's more expensive per unit length, overall it can be a more economical option. Some materials can be produced at tighter tolerances for tighter fitting connections to avoid leak points, while others can be produced with a smoother inner surface, surface for better flushing. So understanding the fluid or fluids that need to be conveyed can help ma maximise the efficiency of your project. For example, the Masterflex Biofarm tubing or the Masterflex Tigon e-food tubing for pharmaceutical and food applications respectively have an extremely smooth bore that avoids particle entrapment and can be easily flushed clean. There are some applications where you need to be able to see the material in the tubing and so the tubing needs to have a certain amount of clarity or transparency. Some applications may also call for colour-coded tubing so an observer can quickly tell the chemical in the tube from the colour of the tubing or any other identifying marks on the tubing. So if this is a requirement, then you need to make sure your tubing can be supplied as required or otherwise able to be marked without compromising tubing performance. The last factor we'll look at is pressure. So positive pressures and vacuums will create stress on any tubing product. And if you're not considering this, then it can create, can create some quite hazardous conditions if your tubing can't handle it. It's also critical to understand the role of temperature here. Increased or de decreased temperatures greatly reduce the pressure rating for materials. So temperature and pressure may need to be considered together. Changing the tubing wall thickness can also increase pressure rating. Again, the Masterflex high performance tubing is an example of this. And also reducing the overall size of the tubing, the OD, ID can also help. So smaller tubing can handle higher pressures than lar larger tubing. But then again, you get a trade-off with flow rate. So if that's not an option, then something like the Gore multi-layer products can be considered. These are very good at handling high pressure applications or aggressive chemicals. But it's also a trade-off with cost as Gore tubing is very expensive. Again, it's also critically important to consider cleaning processes. Conditions created during cleaning cycles can create the most extreme temperature and pressure conditions compared with normal operation and must be considered in tubing selection along with the actual application itself. So that's just a brief look at five factors that can have a big influence over tubing selection. This stamp guide is meant as a tool to get you thinking about the questions you need to be asking and what the considerations are when selecting tubing. Some applications are relatively simple and you can move through the process quite quickly, but it's still a worthwhile process to go through to make sure you've considered all the key factors and don't miss anything. As we said earlier, it's time well spent and can save you a lot of problems and frustration later on. There's also some very good online resources which can be helpful as well and we've got uh, some links here for you. Uh, in fact, if you send us an email with tubing resources in the title, we'll make sure we send you these links and other tubing related documents um, and that can help you with your tubing selection. 
There's also a tubing sample test kit that we can send you, which has samples of most of the tubing types so you can see, see them and feel them and, and also test them in the fluids used in your application. Also, we have uh, uh, the full range of Masterflex uh, products, which includes things like tubing connectors, tubing fittings, various tubing clamps and related hardware, non-contact pressure sensors, and of course, the full range of Masterflex pump systems. If you have any questions or need help with your product selection or your application, you can contact us by phone, email, or on the web, and we'd be more than happy to help. So I'd just like to finish off by saying thank you for joining our Tube Selection web webinar. Uh, feel free to send us any feedback or, suggest or suggestions. Don't forget to email us um, requesting those tubing resources. And we look forward to seeing you on the next John Morris Group webinar. Bye for now.